Marnie, Senator Patterson. Thank you, Mr Acting Deputy President. I find myself yet again following Senator Bernardi in a debate about economic matters, and I thank him for bringing this very important economic matter to the attention of the Chamber today, because he's absolutely right. Uh, the case for company tax cuts in Australia was already very, very strong, uh, and no one on this side of the Chamber needed any further convincing. But as Senator Bernardi has pointed out, uh, the success of the Trump administration in legislating massive tax cuts for companies and individuals um, has brought that into even further and even starker uh, vision for Australians. Uh, we already knew that Australia's corporate tax rate was high and uncompetitive. We already knew that it was way out of step with the OECD and becoming increasingly out of step every single year as major OECD nations like the United Kingdom, Ireland, France and others uh, continue to cut and reduce their corporate income tax, uh, Australia's became increasingly uh, out of step uh, and high and uncompetitive. Uh, from the most recent statistics, uh, before even taking into account the US tax cuts, um, Australia was uh, in the top handful uh, of high corporate tax rates in the OECD. Only Germany, Belgium, France and the United States were higher, and as we know, very shortly the United States will be lower. Uh, there are many countries below Australia in that OECD list of rankings uh, that you wouldn't normally think of as having lower and more competitive corporate tax rates in Australia, uh, particularly Scandinavian countries uh, such as Sweden uh, and Denmark, uh, the Netherlands, uh, Luxembourg. Uh, but it's true that Australia's corporate income tax rate is even higher than those. So we were, but we already knew all that, and we knew that courtesy of people like Ken Henry, who, in his uh, review of the taxation system for the Rudd government, identified the corporate tax rate as being very high and uncompetitive almost a decade ago. It's only become more so in the years since, and who identified that of all the taxes that the Australian government levies, that the company tax is one of the least efficient. Um, that is the deadweight loss, the loss to the Australian economy of raising one dollar of revenue through the corporate income tax uh, is one of the least efficient ones uh, compared to others. It, it causes more displacement, it causes more ill effects, it reduces economic activity more than dollars raised from other forms of taxation. So there was already a pretty compelling case from Ken Henry, there was already a pretty compelling case from where we stand in the OECD, and there was even a very articulate case made in recent years by none other than Bill Shorten and Chris Bowen when they were in government, uh, the need to cut the corporate tax rate in Australia. Uh, we already knew from the historical record that when nations, including Australia, cut the corporate tax rate, that it stimulated economic activity, that it increased investment, that it increased jobs, that it flowed through to higher wages. We know from economic research that all of this is true. Uh, but now we have a very powerful real-world example from a very relevant uh, neighbour of Australia's in the United States, neighbour and friend of Australia in the United States. Um, it has put this issue into very, very stark focus. The United States has legislated massive uh, corporate and income tax and personal income tax cuts. And this is relevant to Australia not just because the United States is the world's largest economy, uh, and that's obviously an important factor. Uh, it's not just a relevant consideration for Australia because uh, the United States is a competitor for global capital and a competitive uh, corporate tax rate is an important uh, means by which we will compete with countries like the United States for global <coughs> capital. Um, but it's particularly important for Australia because the United States is by far and away the largest foreign investor in Australia. Now, why is that important? Why is it important that the largest foreign investor in Australia has just cut their corporate tax rate? Well, an investor in the United States who invests in countries like the United States and Australia, in contemplating next year where they're going to make their big investment and deciding between an equivalent investment in Australia and the United States, they will now know that they can get a relatively better return on that investment in the United States than they would have got in Australia because the corporate tax rate in the United States is now going to be considerably lower at 21 per cent than Australia's rate of 30 per cent for large companies. So that investor is going to think, well, previously I might have invested in Australia. The corporate tax rate in Australia used to be 30 per cent compared to the United States 35 per cent, where they would get, relatively speaking, a better return on, on an equal investment because of Australia's low, lower company tax rate. But now that same investor making that same choice 
is going to be much more sympathetic and much more likely to invest at home in the United States, given that there is a 9 per cent advantage in the corporate tax rate in the United States. And so our largest, by far and away our largest source of foreign investment in this country uh, is now going to be that those investors are now going to be contemplating whether or not Australia remains a good destination for investment. Now, if we were to lose uh, that investment, or even if that investment were to decline slightly, that would have really profound implications for Australians. Uh, we want foreign investment, and we particularly want foreign investment from like-minded uh, nations, close nations like the United States. Uh, it's a good thing when they come here and invest, because when they come here and invest, they do so in, and to create jobs, uh, to create employment, and of course to provide products and services to Australian citizens that we benefit from. So it's vitally important that Australia has a company tax rate which is at least in the ballpark of the United States company tax rate, uh, let alone being way, way, way above it as it will now be if we don't take action, if this parliament doesn't legislate the government's enterprise tax plan. Uh, of course, we've had a really powerful demonstration of the kind of benefits that the United States is going to reap from the company tax cuts that the Trump administration has legislated and wouldn't be a nice thing if Australians were able to enjoy these benefits too. I'm going to read from a list, a short list, a selected list of just a couple of the companies that have announced uh, the actions that they're going to take after the Trump administration has decided to reduce its corporate uh, tax rate. Uh, one is American Airlines. After the Trump administration's tax reform bill passed the Congress, they announced that a $1,000 bonus would be paid to all of their employees uh, and, uh, in the first quarter of 2018. Uh, AT&T, a major uh, telecommunications company, announced also a $1,000 bonus to more than 200,000 US employees uh, and were also going to invest uh, an additional billion dollars in the United States in the, in the 2018 year. Bank of America Corporation uh, announced again a one-time bonus of $1,000 for US employees who are earning up to $150,000 a year, which uh, amounts to about 145,000 <coughs> employees. Boeing has announced $300 million uh, in charitable give giving, workforce development and workplace <coughs> facility enhancements. Uh, there are many others. Comcast, uh, a major, another major telecommunications company, again announced a $1,000 bonus for more than 100,000 workers. They said they were going to hire thousands more employees and invest over $50 billion in infrastructure. Disney, the entertainment company, also announced a one-time $1,000 cash bonus for its more than 125,000 employees. ExxonMobil announced $50 billion in new US investments over the next five years. FedEx announced over $200 million in pay rises, uh, about two-thirds of which will go to <coughs> hourly team members, uh, that is the, the t their employees that are on the lowest wages, and that they were going to contribute $1.5 billion to the company's pension plan, which will ultimately go to its workers upon their retirement. JP Morgan announced it was going to hire 4,000 new employees and open up to 400 new Chase branches, including by increasing the minimum wage from $15 an hour to $18 an hour for 22,000 of their employees. Lowe's, a major department store, announced up to $1,000 bonuses for more than 260,000 employees. They said they were going to expand their maternity and parental leave benefits. Uh, UPS, the, uh, the distribution company, said that they were going to invest $5 billion in their pension plans and $7 billion in a new smart logistics network. And Visa announced that they were going to hike their 401k, the effectively superannuation equivalent for US workers, the rate at which they match, match their um, contributions from 6 per cent to 10 per cent. Um, these are all the really tangible benefits from major US companies to their employees, to their shareholders and to Americans who are going to benefit from this increased investment. Wouldn't it be nice if Australia could share in these benefits too? The truth is that we could share in these benefits too. I want to share one other company. Uh, which is Apple. Uh, Apple has announced that they're going to bring back the vast majority of their uh, hundreds of billions of dollars of offshore cash into the United States. Uh, they estimate that they have uh, $269 billion of cash outside the United States um, and they're going to bring that back onshore. Now, that's going to have a couple of benefits. Obviously, that money can then be invested in Apple's business in the United States, in their employees. It can be returned to their shareholders. It can be invested in new products, uh, in R&D. 
but it also is going to result in a one-time tax payment to the US government of $38 billion. So a tax cut by the US Congress is going to result in a massive once-off payment from Apple to the US government in the form of higher taxes. Uh, wouldn't it be nice if Australia could share in this? The, the answer is we can, and all it requires is for this chamber to take action in passing the government's enterprise tax thank, plan. Thank you, sir.